Now this is a Lancashire mill engine. It's a horizontal steam mill engine. This one is a Queen Street mill, the very last steam powered mill in the world. The flywheel here is coupled to the lay shafts inside the shed which actually operate the looms. Now the thing is it's very critical that the speed of the machine remains exactly the same. Too fast and the looms shuttles will not operate properly. Too slow and the looms, uh, the looms uh, um, weaving parts won't work properly. It's got to be exactly right. And yet machines are being turned off and on and so forth. So how do they keep the how do they keep it all steady? Well they do it by means of this instrument here. The governor. Let's go and take a closer look at what the governor is and how it works. the difference that's the cobs yeah. the cobs because you get a lot of oxygen now coming underneath and the temperature's really risen right are you ready yeah. Love this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so basically if that power pressure is coming out of a quarter diameter hole or a six mil what's going through that big pipe that's going into the engine house so it's tremendous pressure. So I think 60 pounds on every square inch. If you've got a big piston and you've got a mass, you could work out what pressure is pushing that piston. This is the turning gear. Its job is to turn the engine slowly over to get it into the optimum position for starting so it doesn't go at top dead centre. Because it's two pistons are in tandem rather than phased at right angles, it's possible to stop the engine at top dead centre and it can't move. For example, like that. So it has to be moved out of that position. But also it's used to turn the engine over slowly so the lubrication system can get going and that the bearings can be just budged slightly off their stick positions to make the engine smooth before we start running it. Okay, and now the fun starts. The engine driver on a mill engine is called the Tenter. He is just about to start the process of running the engine. Change the set point on the governor. Open the steam valves. All the sirens, so the people in the mill shed know that the engine is about to run. So now they're opening the steam valves and the engine is beginning to turn on the steam. It does. Governor speeds up. So the trick is to adjust the set point control to about the same speed where the engine can be stable. This is a bit of a critical operation because if they get it wrong, you can over the engine and perhaps damage all the plants. But now we can see the governor wheel spinning up. See how it lifts up like that? It's adjusting the... Uh, of the system, which is you would do electronically. So now we're down the back, the back side of the engine. There's the governor. Now the governor controls this silver rod over the top, and that in turn controls these two levers. This, this top one here 
this controls the phasing of the valves on the high pressure cylinder and the other one's controlling the phasing of the valves on the low pressure cylinder. The method of control for this is interesting, it does not control the steam flow. <coughs> this equipment here controls the phasing of the valves, the timing of the valves. And the silver rod you see on the top, that there is the uh, error signal. And what it's doing is, is it's changing the point at which the valves open and close. <coughs> this is a dashpot system for damping that system so that it doesn't get uh, to ring too much from it ringing. There's a mechanical oil dashpot system. And these are the inlet valves themselves. And if you stand and watch, you might see a couple of times the valve lifter in operation. So that's the whole system for you. So there's the main shaft coming through. dangerous it is as well all these flying belts that power everything and ladies in particular would easily get their hair caught in it or their clothes caught in it and accidents were really very common well here we are at the uh, low pressure cylinder end of the engine this is a tandem engine so the high pressure and the low pressure cylinders are both in line and they operate a common crank and there's the flywheel these two eccentric motions over here are operating the uh, valve timing system there that is and that's what operates the valves which in fact keep the uh, cylinders working properly this is the back of the flywheel so here's the crank that's the crank and looking around the back of the crank we have some intriguing auxiliary equipment the two eccentrics there are for operating the valve phasing and that's got a drive belt see the brown drive belt coming there and it's powering this equipment here and these are lubricating oil pumps and they're pumping oil to the header tank system and if you look carefully you can just see oil dripping out of the two rippers into those pots there and then into the eccentrics and that's how they are lubricated so every part of the engine is kept lubricated by a uh, forced drip lubrication system 